Hey everybody and welcome back to the Green Witch Homestead. So if you watched last week's video you'll know that we got some new additions to our farm. We through a total random chance of fate were able to bring home a breeding trio of Kun Kun pigs. They're still very young. One of our viewers last week made the suggestion of cinnamon as a name and I kind of fell in love with the idea of naming these pigs after spices. So without further ado let me introduce you to our new pigs. So this little lady is Cinnamon. This beautiful lady here is Clove, because she kind of looks like a clove studded onion. And this little chonker right here is my boar, and his name is Cayenne, because he's spicy. We have started work on beautifying the gardens for the season. We got an amazing deal on some wood chip mulch. I do have to pick up a couple more bags of it to finish out. This is what I kind of wanted to do last year. It's not perfect, but it'll at least help keep the Missouri jungle down between my garden beds because no matter how hard I try, it just keeps coming back. It is a beautiful spring day. We've had lots of rain in the last couple days and it is time to get our potatoes and onions into the ground. So we're gonna be doing that today. We have done some work on the two market gardens, finally got them finished out, turned over. We will turn them this first year. Every time we do a new garden bed, if it's gonna be an in-ground here on this property because our soil is so bad, the first year that we go to plant in it, we will turn it with a tiller. We'll pile up the nutrients on that garden spot for several years and let them break down naturally. And then we will turn it in to get it down below the clay level because our entire property is backfill. So it's so much clay and rock and sand. We have to kind of give those nutrients a hand to get down in there. Now, once the first year of planting season is done, we will no longer till these gardens. They will be no-till method from here on out. It's a much healthier way to do a vegetable garden. It guarantees a good natural biome layer in your soil. It's time to harvest all my cilantro. If you can see them under the curtain there, the broccolis are doing good and my cauliflowers are doing really good. I did go and seed beets between the rows of cauliflower. I've always had a problem growing beets in my gardens. I was never really sure why. They grew beautiful, beautiful leafy greens, but I never actually got the bulb. So I did a little research and I found out that my soil was lacking in a trace mineral of boron. So I found a way to add that to my soil and we're going to do beets again this year and hopefully I will get a good harvest of nice, big juicy red beets for making beet powder and pickled beets and all the delicious yummy beet stuff. My little flower garden is coming to life. The few tulips that survived the pigs last year have come back and are blooming beautifully. I've got all kinds of irises and lilies coming up over there and these gorgeous little freckled violets. I can't get over these. They are just beautiful and I've got a couple patches of them. This is the one I'm super excited about. This iris right here has a bloom on it. The reason I'm excited about that particular iris amongst all the others that I have is this will be the first year it blooms for me. Um, and I'm hoping that it blooms true. It's supposed to be a frilly double bearded iris with white top petals and purple bottom petals. So fingers are crossed. We will see if that's what it blooms as. I'm ex super excited. I've had it in my garden for two years now and this will be the first year that it blooms. You can see behind me the work that we've done on the front show victory garden. It looks 10 times better than it did a couple months ago. Everything's been turned over. I still have to go through and pick out some of the bigger rocks and bigger bits of wood and then we will row this out and start planting in it. I've also started working on the front garden space along the roads. That old wheelbarrow that I found I've kind of put some soil in and I've put some petunias in it and they'll spill out. The petunias are not looking so hot right now because we had a little bit of a cold night the other night. So the flowers that were open kind of, it happens, but petunias will come back with a vengeance. So I'm not worried. Uh, we are still going to cut this out a bit and put the railroad ties in so we can hold that wall back and get some more soil in there to cover up the fabric cloth that we have. And I want to show you guys something that we have happening on this side of our roadside. So I got extremely lucky and the entire roadside easement for 50 feet from the stairwell entrance to our show gardens is all natural wild irises. These irises bloom in a variation of dark blue, yellow, and some light kind of icy blue and they're absolutely gorgeous. I love them. It's time
time for us to get potatoes into the ground. To look for when to plant your potatoes, you want to look around your area. If the buds on your trees are starting to look green, then it's time to put your potatoes in the ground. You can start a little sooner if you want. You can start a little later if you want, but that's just a good indicator for your area because it's going to be a different day depending on where you are in the country. So keep that in mind. We've gone ahead and hilled up the portion of the beds that's going to have different row plants in them. This space back here is going to be for corn and squash, so I haven't really mounted that up yet. Potatoes, what I'm going to be doing, I'm doing two rows of potatoes in this show garden. In the big one, we're going to do four rows, and they're going in now. You will be seeding potatoes again in the fall for a second harvest. Got my first row in, and I put the straw down, and I laid the potatoes in. I buried them in the straw, and then I pulled the dirt over on top. My next set of potatoes is going to go in this ditch here and the straw will get put on and then this dirt will get folded on top and we'll have two rows of potatoes here and then we can move on to planting the rest of our stuff. Straw is down, that's the first row of potatoes buried. Potatoes are gonna go in here. Potatoes are laid, I do them about uh, six to eight inches apart. So I'm just gonna go bury them in the straw and then bury them in the dirt. Just showing you really quickly what I'm doing, that's where the straw is, I'm just kind of pulling the dirt over. So we have one row of potatoes here, one here, and then we have a walkway here, and a walkway here. So that's going to be a double row of potatoes in this bed. And that's basically it. Potatoes are in the Victory Garden. Onions are going to go in in a moment. And we're pretty much done planting what needs to be planted right now. I will be putting some are seeding some carrots and beets next week. We have a really big rainstorm coming. You don't want to seed your carrots when there's a lot of rain coming because you're just going to wash them away. So I'm just going to wait until next weekend and we'll seed carrots for the and beets for the next couple rows and then we're just waiting to be able to put our tomatoes in the ground. I'm going to take you down and show you what the big garden looks like. All right, so I'm not going to film too much with me talking because it's extremely windy out here right now but we're down in the big garden and we're just kind of running the electric tiller through it so that we can just kind of loosen it up a little bit and get it ready for planting potatoes and onions. So we were gonna use the electric tiller because it doesn't dig as deeply and like I said, this is just to loosen up this soil again, but our generator, our fuel generator kind of crapped out. so. We're switched to the two wheel tractors and we're just tilling it. He's breaking it up again with the hoe and then we're gonna run the tiller through to loosen everything, fluff it up, and then we're gonna bed it out. So everything's coming along nicely down here. We have one more big pile of junk to get rid of and then we're going to be kind of making a sort of parkland on this front side with some seeding areas and a fire pit and then the back side will be seeded for grazing but here is the big victory garden the in bed rows are all cut and ready to go we will be seeding potatoes down here shortly as well as onions and then Last year's market garden is covered, killing off some of the weeds that were in there. We've kind of made the decision that with last year's market garden, we want to kind of do raised beds. They're not going to be full raised beds, it's just going to be kind of contain the soil a bit. Hopefully we can get that soon. If we can't get that in the next couple weeks, then we'll probably just do the in-ground method again this year and do the raised beds next year. Eventually that's what this, play, this one will be as well. It'll have nice edging on it just to keep all of that soil that we've worked so hard on where it is because our property does run slightly downhill from here. I don't want all of that hard work washing down the hill every time it rains. Speaking of rain, however, I don't know if you can tell behind me, the clouds are coming in. I've got a few more potatoes to get into the ground and these guys are screaming for their dinner. So it is time for me to wrap up this video. Spring is definitely here and I'm so excited to get back into the garden season. I can't wait to take you guys to the markets. We do have our first market coming up this week. I know it's been a little bit since we've done an update on the Victory Garden. Waiting for planting season kind of really drags on when you're expecting it. But it is here. It is officially planting season. 
things are gonna start growing, things are gonna start producing soon, and I get, can't wait to take you along on the journey. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the Victory Gardens. And remember to check out the playlist so you can watch all of the tips from start to finish. As we go through the year, we'll be adding more. And remember, get out there and get your hands dirty.